to plug my ASMR mouse in and I just plugged it in. Sorry to disturb the ambience. Boom put a boom. Hey guys, I'm having having a sandwich. excited about today's stream. I had this idea, it was like an epiphany. It just came to me one day and I thought, you know what, I should try this. Is the BGM loud? I'll turn it down for you guys, no worries. So, essentially the plan for today, we're going to play three scary games. The first of which is called Growing My Grandpa, which is apparently a horror game with virtual pet elements. So you and I are going to cuddle up and play this weird little game, see what happens, and hopefully we won't get too scared. And I'm going to try not to scream and blow out the mic, okay? Thank you for all the supers, everybody. Let's get started, shall we? Also, I'm going to get a little, get a little drinky. Get a little drinky. change the cursor's image and function. Only when pointing, indicated by the ind extended index finger, can you, the player, interact with certain menu buttons and prompts. Please click, click below in the pointing mode to continue. So we have pointing and we have, like, I guess grabbing. Okay. The second cursor mode is indicated by the cursor's image, featuring a hand extending all fingers. This mode concerns interacting with objects inside the world, mainly picking up an object and moving it into another position. So, I see, like down there. To continue, please pick up the piece of trash on the right and place it in the trash can on the left. Remember, the right mouse button will change the cursor's mode, but when holding something, the mode cannot be changed until the cursor is not holding something. I see. That's it. There will be many situations in Growing My Grandpa that will require you to pick things up, place things, grab things, or give things. Don't be afraid to experiment, and keep an open mind about using your hand. You hear that? Keep an open mind about using your hand. Please click the button below to continue. Remember, menu buttons must be clicked in the pointer mode. In order to expedite the cleaning process, you can use digit 1, 2, and 3 on your keyboard's number row to reposition the trash can below. Try moving the trash can to the right of the screen. Well done. Please click the continue button to move on. Chi-Chi, thank you for the Arca Super and happy birthday. Why, my darling? Well done. 
please click the Continue button to move on. A variety of video options can be changed at any time with the function keys F3, 4, and 5. Press F3 to adjust or disable shader effects. Press F4 to cycle through display resolution options. Press F5 to change cursor types. Okay. Three cursor color schemes. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think I'm fine with that. Okay, I'll bring over the small question mark at the top right, provides an overlay related to available configuration. Alright, whatever. Thus ends the tutorial. Alright, let's go. <laughs> Week one. Let's go. I excused Adrienne during music class today and spoke with her about a recent string of demerits. It was our first time meeting outside of our quarterly evaluations, and I believe it went well. I can certainly understand Mrs. Richardson's classroom observations concerning Adrienne's emotional state. She was, of course, intensely shy when we first met. As I understand it, she is similarly withdrawn in her classroom activities, and only speaks or acts when she absolutely must. Some things she simply will not do Instead of participating in mandatory group activities, she will sit alone and accept that she will receive a demerit. Before the meeting, I read Mrs. Richardson's parent-teacher report, which allowed me to estimate some about Adrienne's home life. The parents are well-educated and come from a prestigious background, but they lack time to properly nurture Adrienne. She is often alone which he is not. The parents seem to not understand the importance of warmth and affirmation when dealing with someone so young. Having two parents of this reserved and icy temperament exacts an inhibition in a child. The child's imagination is subdued, but only ostensibly, for it eventually finds its way into regular life. I surmised that I would be able to reach out to Adrienne by way of making Oh, ugh, ugh. I don't like that. How are you liking your new house? You've told me you used to live close by, but it can still be a big adjustment. A new room, a new school. A, a basement. I like that. The basement. Yeah, well, there's a lot of cool stuff. Mom and Dad sent me down there. Your mom and dad made you go. Yeah, but there's lots of cool stuff. Well, that's not why they sent me down there, though. Why did you? Why did they send you down there? Fighting. They were fighting, shouting. They came in to help, and they shouted at me. They said, "Go clean up downstairs." So, I went. Mm, that sounds tough. Do they fight a lot? No. Well, they, uh... It's all right, Adrienne. Maybe you can tell me more about the basement instead. Okay. Well, it was weird at first. The stuff down there. But cool. I found something living, sort of. That's very interesting, Adrienne. Please, tell me more. By indulging her in her fantasies and stories, I was able to glean more of an understanding of Adrienne's anxiety surrounding her home and parents. <laughs> Aki Akira, thank you for the super. You've been a very good girl today. The symbols of Adrienne's story seem to carry their own traumatic weight, and her exploration of the basement may very well be a vehicle for the conveyance of her anxiety. Whatever might come of our next meeting, whether she will engage in similar make-believe, I will set down her story here. Adrienne's story begins with her delving into the basement with a trash receptacle and the goal of cleaning up. She discovered one of the walls was covered in plastic bags. She went to investigate, intent on tearing away whatever they covered. I see. Upon removing the plastic trash 
flashbacks from the wall, she noticed their interior lining was covered in glass. Like a window, I offered. No, she said. Like a mirror. Reflecting inward towards the animal they covered. I gently asked her what exactly this animal was. Here is where the material reality of the story took a turn for the explicitly fantastic and imaginary. Hmm. Upon her discovery of it, at her gaze, it grew or extended its shaggy hair itself, like the hair like the fur of a dog. I offered, no, she said, not the fur of a dog, nor the hair on her head. It grew out towards her, the animal's hair reaching out. It was hard, standing almost straight, like the hair on a brush. A bristle, I offered. Yes, she said. She was very afraid at first, but then very curious. I asked her what else was in the room. More things hidden away, she said. Things of grandpa's as well. First she found a hidden passage under the stairs. Inside were strange dolls, magic objects, naked, faceless figures. I heard these cryptic utterances and merely nodded. In order to keep the game of make-believe going, I only pressed for details where I thought necessary. The faceless dolls could be a simple metaphor for the anonymity she feels in her own home. The hidden passage, I am unsure of what to make of that. The revealing of the concealed seems to be thematic in her fantasy. The door under the stairs is but one example. <laughs> so we don't know what it is, I see. See around here? It's just an empty basement. The darkness of this shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. Okay, we need to find light somewhere, I guess. Can't open that door. Puzzle-based, I'm going to lose my mind. Let's have a look, shall we? What is this? Once she removed the panel and found the magical hidden passage, she was very specific about what she took. She found a magic book, a magic doll, photo of her late grandpa and magic glue. Ooh. A slouching doll. Its material is rough and coarse. Papers crudely bound together to form a book. Eurasian step shamanism and fusiform gyrus, an interdisciplinary study in sympathetic magic, a dissertation by Jacob Hart. The impetus of this research was the recognition of a particular pattern in fragments of documents relating to magic and magico-religious practices. I don't know what Grandpa's cooking, baby. I don't know. Numerous sources were drawn from Commentaries on laws relating to the banning of sorcery and necromancy. Compilations of folk charms relating to love spells, hagiographs of saints and their encounters with devils. The list spans many centuries and a great distance from the, Le from the Levant to the Khazar Khaganate to the border of the modern nation states of Russia and Kazakhstan today. From 
this paper trail arose a consistent account about a certain form of magic relating to the binding of demons to a sorcerer's will. A demon called the Heaven of Needles, or the Angel of Needles, was known to be best kept by shamanic keepers or wards who suffer from face blindness. Proso, proso pagnosia, I see, whether by birth or through developmental causes like a stroke or head injury. It was known to be extremely effective but terribly dangerous, so much so that it became outlawed several times and was generally a popular scapegoat relating to unexpected death. The nexus of magico religious meaning, meaning making, I see, sorcery regarding human related desires, and the history and science of neurological disorders related to the fusiform gyrus is where the subject of this dissertation will reside. I will outline further and then analyze the historical sources I mentioned previously, and then I will go into the neurology of mystic and magico religious experiences. After that, I will detail my ongoing correspondence with a resident of the Ural Mountain region who is an expert folklorist and keeper of traditions he claims have been passed down through his extended family for generations. Interesting. Glue. All-purpose glue. Love to see it. All sorts of things in here. photo of your late grandfather. Mr. PhD, on the reverse side of the photograph there is more text. Good luck on your trip to the Urals. Stay warm. Hmm. All clean. The space will not be dirty again until next week. I wonder what makes it dirty. I interrupted to ask what she did with these magical, mysterious materials. Grow Grandpa, she explained plainly, and then without missing a beat, she continued on with her story. Feeling this was a potent symbol, I stopped her again to ask what she meant. Somewhat puzzled, I did not understand immediately. She explained slowly. Grandpa lives in the cage in the other room, the cage behind the door, that grew people in the cage. Anything else I can grab in there? Okay. Can't do anything with the trash pile. A hastily written note. I have repeatedly called your homes to no avail, and so I am forced to leave this here for you all. I found William sitting in the corner of this enclosure area, seemingly severely concussed. Whiskers was gone in none of its usual hiding places. I immediately suspected the worst. The project thus must be suspended for now. I am leaving up the usual mirrored coverings we use to keep the anthrop anthropoidic void sealed. I have done my best to lock up everything on such short notice. It is a hasty fix, but will require some time to find a more permanent remedy. I am honestly hoping you do not find this note, as I intend to lock the house down too. I intend to race you off to retrieve your lockbox keys. Do not worry about William's key. It and the rest of his equipment is almost certainly deep within whiskers now. I pray you do not enter this room. No matter how it may appear, William cannot be helped and is only being kept alive as a means of continuing predation on the rest of us. I will say once again, no matter what state you may encounter William in, he cannot be helped. I have sympathy for the young man, I truly do. But I found on his person several photos of his late sister, which would imply certain risks he knew he was taking. Our, extent, our extant research materials have now become possible liabilities, either criminal or professional in nature, so I have stashed them away. I believe 
I let you all know how I might do this if we were to ever experience such an event as this. I hope you remember what I told you. So long then. Beyond the door, in the room, the cage was hidden, concealed in another cloak of inward-facing mirrors. A hidden cage lined with mirrors. It is strange, almost pathetic, the elaborate fantasy of self-reflection concealment captivity. Hmm. Whiskers. Is that a mustache? At the cage, she finally cast her spell, but it was confusing. She confided at first. She took the magic doll, the magic glue, and the photo of her grandpa, and she combined them, and she wished very hard. I can only assume in this fantasy that next her wish would come true. In what child story would it not? I see. A tangible symbol of intention and desire. She put Grandpa in the cage, Assuming that was part of the ritual, she was not clear on how it worked. When precise instructions, what precise instructions she could glean from her grandfather's magic book was complicated by her reading comprehension. She wished with all her heart, and then she told me she waited a while for something, anything to happen, and after that time, she began to cry. I cried really hard, she said. I wanted Grandpa to be back. I wanted my parents to stop being so mean. And it hurt me. It hurt me wish for my Grandpa to come back, for my parents to be different. I could feel it through the walls, and it felt me through the air. I asked her what exactly she meant. She could only repeat what she said. By this time, lunch was almost over. I said goodbye to Adrienne and she left to rejoin her class. I was left to consider our conversation. I believe the storytelling strategy I have employed was not unfruitful, but I must probe deeper if I can. Although I can be sure of nothing I interpret, the impressions I get may begin to help me get an idea of the right questions to ask. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to certain topics or keywords you can discuss with Grandpa. Wish. Consider discussing this when Grandpa emerges. You have also gained the following keyword. Shell. Week two. The image of the doll with the human face and the all the symbol of desire is making me laugh. Oh, baby, that's true. No, I thought it was funny too. Let me adjust the volume on my microphone. I think one ear is a little quieter than the other. Well done. There we go. 
Ja. I didn't even think about the ear tapping being like an actual thing that you guys would enjoy, but there you go, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, baby, it's okay. I met again with Adrienne in order to address her potential emotional outbursts in the past few weeks. It is our second time meeting, and while it is standard practice to have multiple sessions with a troubled student, as I assemble a report for the counseling department, I could not help but think, as we already sat down in my office, that Adrienne already seemed to show a remarkable change in self-esteem and confidence, and perhaps my and Mrs. Richardson's estimation of her as emotionally disturbed was erroneous. The paralyzing shyness and withdrawn attitude Adrienne possessed last week was not entirely diminished, but she seemed to hold herself differently this week. However, this only lasted as long as our conversation pertained to initial introductory pleasantries. When I began once again asking her about her parents, her feelings regarding her new school and her home, she quickly lost what new confidence she had gathered up and withdrew again into herself. So, once again, I partook in some collaborative make-believe but this time I was aided by the fact that I had managed to do some research into Adrian's grandfather, and I had some insight into what she might actually be finding in the basement. Now, this may be overstepping my bounds some as a school counselling caseworker, but this was all in the service of making Adrian comfortable and happy in this learning environment. In any case, I was able to dig up information regarding the grandfather by inquiring at the university in town. Not that I make a habit of sleuthing, but I had a suspicion the grandfather was a professor there, or at least some sort of researcher, due to the fact that the newly constructed laboratory on the campus I drive by every day bears his name and memorial. He was some sort of anthropologist or linguist or neuroscientist. I did not have to dig that deep before the scope of his work became dizzying and I ran up against the limits of my undergraduate education. But back to the make-believe. Hold on, I think I've turned the volume up a little too much. There we go, that's better. Uh, I need another, need another drink. I'm getting a little sore throat. Ah. your grandpa like? Is he a smart man? Not anymore, but I'm teaching him. So he's grown a good deal then. You've been feeding him well? Yeah, he's getting bigger, but he has a lot of room in his cage. He's still behind the bars? Yeah, well, he might be able to climb out eventually. And there's this vent in the ceiling. Well, Perhaps if he climbs out, I can meet him someday. Yeah, maybe. But he's not ready to leave. He can't take care of himself. I have to feed him, pick up after him. Ah, you store food in your lunchbox. That's nice of you to share. He, he can almost talk. You cannot speak with him. He doesn't... He doesn't have a mouth, sort of. But how do you feed him? He has a mouth on the outside, on his shell, or the stuff that is his skin. 
I'm a little confused. Maybe you can go through a typical day with your grandpa. Okay. I asked her to explain exactly what she, how she goes about growing her grandpa. Then Adrienne began another tale. According to Adrienne, in the week that had passed, much had changed in the basement. The hairy thing that was here before is gone. Of course. Oh. A lot of notes. You can examine this detail later at the study corner. For the sake of university policy and the health of any future career, you hope to have, you will abide by the non-disclosure contract you have signed. Do not break the anthropoidic vacuum without my prior consultation and approval. Any anthropoidic forms brought into the enclosure area must not be left unattended. When not in dormancy, the sample will attempt to take anthropoid shells. Please see shell notes for more. The sample's exposure to some of our neuronal activity is unavoidable. However, the speed at which its dis desirous yield is produced can be dampened by several precautions regarding lipid and emo oh, libidinal ah, and emotional urges. Keep conversational keep conversation not related to lab work to a minimum. If you begin to suspect you are developing attachments to your colleagues, contact me as soon as possible. Hmm. Ritual behavior with the sample, top trading, bargaining, will result in dismissal from the project. The precise mechanism of the exchange of symbols and gifts required for a requested Cyrus yield is not known, and even then, anecdotal accounts of success are illegible, end in violent death. I see. Ooh. Regarding growth cycles, every time Whiskers regenerates and leaves dormancy, it is to be logged as a new propagation. The sample's bodily existence cannot be illegible, i.e. a part that cannot be cut from the whole so there can only be one living propagation. Propagations are to be terminated after five weeks. Any further developments puts us at risk. Termination procedures will be posted and followed with extreme care. All of that out of the way, I want to welcome you to the project. I look forward to working with you. Hmm. Where's Grandpa? It was scary at first, she said. The way he moved. The way the dull skin covered him. I wanted to interject. This somehow seemed inappropriate. But I kept listening. When I look at him, she continued, when I think about him, he grows and moves. <laughs> it's like he's growing for me. So he's growing bigger now. Yes, she said. Bigger every day. Oh, there he is. This begins the actual growing part of growing your grandpa. Beneath the doll's burlap skin, the follicles knit together what resembles a proper person, your grandpa. You are in charge of its cognitive development and diet until it is able to sustain itself. Currently you are observing, Grandpa. Please click the arrow back button for a brief tutorial of your duties as caretaker. Okay. Here we can see a variety of options regarding growing your Grandpa. Highlighted in red are objectives related to feeding and teaching Grandpa. Important messages regarding Grandpa's recent activity will also appear here. You'll need to 
find it food and learning material before you can move on to the next week. Some foods will make Grandpa happy, others merely content. Some food will make Grandpa disgusted to the point of nausea. Learning material is also scattered throughout the basement. Seek out vocabulary cards intended to help teach English and basic anthropoidic concept formation. The options highlighted in red are related to navigating around Grandpa's enclosure. The Go to Grandpa option will let you perform all, all actions directly related to Grandpa, feeding, teaching, observing, etc. Accessing the study corner will let you go over any documents you pick up as the weeks go by. It's a good idea to learn about the work of the people who last occupied this space. Accessing the kitchen corner will let you search for food in the old refrigerator and prepare food for Grandpa if need be. Help button will replay this tutorial. The save game button will save your current progress. And the exit game button will take you back to the menu. More buttons may or may not appear depending on your development of Grandpa, so watch out for them. One final note, take care to explore the basement at your leisure, however, due to the entropic nature of clutter and trash, different weeks may allow you to find things you had not previously discovered. Good luck. Interesting. Lunchbox is empty. Let's talk to Grandpa. You examine Grandpa, noting its movements, respiration, and general mood. Grandpa seems sort of sluggish and bored. You get the feeling it may be more content and ready and readily cooperative once fed and taught a word or two. Teach Grandpa. What? I thought we did have. Oh no. No response. Right. Let's go and get some food then, shall we? the basement. Ooh. Is there anything in the trash pile? Let's have a look. What's that? What is that? Corroded battery. <laughs> Grandpa might eat it, however. Okay. Grandpa this word to read the notes of past educators. I see. Okay. Bulbous growth. Something appears to be growing from the wall. You take a closer look. A pulsating sac, a slimy membrane that is its skin seems to contain might be able to be opened with a blade. Hmm. The darkness of the shadowy corner unnerves you. You cannot explore here without some form of light. I see. Trash. What's in that cabinet? Slouching under the weight of rotten refuse. More trash. More trash. Let's see. Oh, blueberries. Grandpa might like this. Yay. Okay, that's good. All clean. This space will not be dirty again until next week. Okay. Top draw. Oh, this is just a fucking cl trash cleaning simulator, isn't it? I am having fun, however. began he had us all cover our faces completely. An earthenware pot was illegible, and on the inside as we stole brief glances at it we could see the interior was inlaid with mirrors. The, ineligible, the illegible gave it small pieces 
of dough, spoiled food, chicken feed, keeping it content. The keeper gestured towards the small bag where the food composted and told us to be careful not to feed it any meat. I asked if the rotting food was enough to sustain it, how it might get nutrients from any of this. The keeper regarded me seriously and said it did not matter what it was fed, the act of feeding itself was what mattered. The act of feeding flesh is another act, however. He then gave me another series of grave warnings regarding not keeping any animal-derived foods near where I might be keeping it. Hmm. What about the bottom drawer? Do we have a key? I don't think we do. I have to keep an eye out. <laughs> Grandpa's not a Roomba. Leave him alone. Something about that painting looks strange. <gasps> Ooh. A folder full of radiographic images. Interesting. Okay. The trash pile. I'm the trash man. <gasps> Who's that? Fiberglass insulation. <laughs> isn't really food. I mean, he might eat it, but I don't think it's really food. All clean. Nice. There's another trash pile. Oh, sorry guys. Simple paper doll. Might be useful in the construction of magic symbols. Oh, yay! Magic. Just what I wanted. Hmm. Nothing to find, apart from the doll. Alright. Let's go back to Grandpa. Go to Grandpa. Teach. Hello. This brief tutorial will go over teaching Grandpa pronunciation and vocalization. For example, the vocabulary word you picked will appear in the top left corner. In the bottom right corner will be a pentagon that is divided up into eight sections. A section of the pentagon will be highlighted briefly. The notification sound will play, and soon another section will be highlighted. You will control a small round icon that sits above the pentagon by using your mouse. The ball is constrained to the limits of the pentagon. The goal is to keep your icon over the highlighted area and move it as the area changes sections around the pentagon. When you hold left click above the correct highlighted area, the icon will start to vibrate along with the simulated vocal cords and the current letter of your word will begin to turn red. Keep holding over the highlighted section and adjust your icon as it changes place. Soon the letter will become fully red. After every letter becomes read, Grandpa will proudly pronounce the word to you, and will be considered learned. I see. Teaching Grandpa these words will accelerate its cognitive development and lead to further breakthroughs in general intelligence. Alright, let's go. You approach the small window. Hello, Grandpa. I think I misunderstood the tutorial. <laughs> God, this is weird to control. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm lost. The guys, I'm lost. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm also sorry I'm covering it up. How? Right, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna check that tutorial again. What the fuck was that? section of the Pentagon we highlighted briefly, and notifications I will play, and soon another section will be highlighted. You will control a small round icon. The ball is constrained. The goal is to keep your icon over the highlighted area and move it as the area changes sections around the Pentagon. Right, that's what I was doing though. When you hold... Ah... Uh, okay, 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 I get it now, I get it. I wasn't clicking. Hello, hello. Look at this. This is so difficult to control. Is it not moving? It's not moving. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, looking at Grandpa's mouth, like, yeah, I should call her. <laughs> You motherfuckers are funny. Why isn't it moving anymore? I see. It fights you a lot less if you hold the bounce button down. Deep within, Grandpa, strange membranes phonate. Hello. Having completed the lesson, you take a look at the back of the vocabulary module card and the notes are written by administrators of the past. Sloppy articulation. Uh, uh, we are already encountering some difficulty as Whiskers' subjectivity is so much determined by a diverse and dynamic array of influences, it attempts to mimic the thoughts and desires it passively intercepts, and these imitations go on to structure the basis of its identity. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Only later, in Whiskers' growth cycle, does it begin to form an identity or identities that are coherent and capable of resembling a sane, rational human being when engaged in conversation. One must imagine how hard it would be to converse with someone who is not yet oriented in one particular way towards who or how they are, because they might have twenty different honest answers to those questions, all of them mixed and muddled together. Because we have started with the basics of conversation, greetings, partings, identifying one another, forming questions, etc., it is fortunate that Whiskers' current growth, number 19, I believe, has developed a mostly accurate human mouth simulation. Hello was a bit of a challenge in the previous growth, as it had failed to develop an adequate organ to act as a human tongue. You step away from the bars and store the, mo the module card at the document table. I see. There's a tutorial for this as well. Ay, oh, yay, yay. This brief tutorial will go over the basics of feeding Grandpa. <laughs> he has simulated the production of tooth enamel to mimic a human mouth. I see. First, you need to select an item from the lunchbox. Click on the lunchbox in the bottom right corner. The contents of the lunchbox will be displayed. 
Select an item from the lunchbox. Doing so will fill your hand with this item. Note that any food can be put back in the lunchbox. Before Grandpa can be fed, it must judge the food by smell. If you hover your hand above Grandpa's olfactory bulbs, if Grandpa is pleased, it will allow you to feed it. Most foods Grandpa will accept, however, getting Grandpa to consume other things requires some culinary deception. When Grandpa is willing to be fed, hover your hand over its mouth and click. Grandpa will then consume the food. Okay, this seems simple enough. And the culinary deception, I would assume, is giving it one nice piece of food to smell and then feeding it something nasty. Grandpa is enticed by the smell. Click on Grandpa's mouth to feed it. Okay. Let's... Hmm. Where's his nose? Left of its mouth, I see. He finds it palatable. Okay. How would you like a battery? Would you like it? Feed him. Okay. It said culinary deception. No, 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 no. The meal appears to have been sufficient. Alright, I don't think we'll be able to feed him any of this. Yeah, we can't feed him that. Okay, I guess we're done. Nice. You step away from the window set in the bars. Grandpa grunts in appreciation and locomotes towards <sighs> his favorite, his favorite corner. Seek out things to feed Grandpa. Oh dear. Hmm. We need to teach him more as well. Hmm. what it meant. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alright, Grandpa. Time for some dinner. Let's feed him something nasty. Concealed battery. Although quickly consumed, the meal seems to be causing some indigestion. He empties its stomach onto the floor. Contents pulled together in front of the cage. Oh no! Right. It makes a plaintive whine, clearly disappointed with the lack of sustenance. It dejectedly locomotes back to its favorite corner. Well, we got him the one other. Ah, okay, we also need to find more words. Hmm. Study corner. Yeah, we searched the file cabinet and see if we can find anything. Ooh, cashews. Yay, I like those. I like cashew nuts, they're nice. It was said to pass from one family of step people to another but pressed on its ultimate origin. <laughs> Somewhere to the south, 
coiled in a bowl covered in incantations buried upside down by a graveyard, a common late antiquity demon trap. Oi, I take offense to that. The keeper, an elderly man in failing health, was ready to expound on and on about the dangers of the organism, but when I asked more pointed questions about the history of its acquisition, I was given cut, curt responses that had a way of circling back to vague warnings. Hmm. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Ooh. Grandpa. <gasps> we can teach him his name. Grandpa. things in the corners. severe in tone. Dr. Hart's work is very important. The material we are working with is potentially very dangerous. I will be handing out a copy of this note as a reminder to everyone I am not trying to single any particular person out. We all have misconceptions about the nature of this project from time to time. With that out of the way, here are some things to keep in mind. The active growth must be thoroughly terminated via the correct procedures at the very four weeks after dormancy is interrupted. It doesn't matter what you've done or haven't done regarding tests or procedures or how much the anthropoidic vacuum has been disturbed, disrupted, sorry. We are not ready to go beyond four weeks at this point. A step-by-step -step guide determination has been posted by the enclosure wall. Please, please, please do not place the educational posters over this posting. Number two, do not disrupt the anthropoidic vacuum without Dr. Hart's prior consultation and approval. In case of emergency, where the vacuum is disrupted, put on your equipment and begin the lockdown procedure. Make an extensive note of when and how the breach occurred. If you find the habitat empty, page Dr. Hart immediately, but do not attempt to speak with anyone else. This thing can get very smart, I'm sure you're all well aware from the stories we heard on our acquisition trip. The greatest caution should be used when dealing with a potential aggressive mimicry scenario. Please seek me out if you have any more questions. Bio has it been. Hmm. And exoskeletons. Each growth from a cycle does not along with any desirous yield it may generate, or else it will move from one shell to the next as it outgrows them. In the small amounts of time I have spent with it in preparation, I have noticed it tends towards human forms. However, we should keep a tight lid on the anthropoidic seal in order to be cautious before we begin to experiment with exposing it long-term to anthropoid stimulus. Medical imaging device. Hmm. Propagation twenty one. Day nineteen after dormancy. Vacuum broken, yes. Hmm. Let's go feed him, shall we? 
and stomach contents go down. Right now we will teach him, teach him the word Rupa. Deep within Grandpa, strange membranes phonate competently. Oh. Having completed the lesson, you take a look at the back of the vocabulary module. Card. <laughs> and the notes there written by administrators of the past. Grandpa, part of vocabulary and vocalization module E81. General pronunciation comments. Usual trouble with articulation. Voice thin and raspy possibly underdeveloped larynx. We have done several sessions of what we are calling familial relation simulation. I and a co-researcher sit in chairs opposite the enclosure. We are wearing the usual masks, and we begin to act out a scene, mostly through improvisation, that might roughly resemble a kitchen table conversation between an immediate family. Repeated trials would reveal, although our simulated conversation was purposefully vague and unspecific regarding persons and identities, we would only address each other as brother, father, sister, etc., it soon became apparent the encoded information and associations we unconsciously drew upon when hearing and speaking these words was being picked up on by whiskers and its PSI-type field of reception interpretation of brain-slash-mind events and semantic content. My co-researcher William noticed this in a situation where Whiskers was given the, a role as a sister and he as a brother. I was the father. Whiskers began responding to certain prompts with unusual specificity, as well as a general pattern of tomba and speech, who continued with unusual consistency. As soon as the simulation ended, and we left the enclosure area, William let me know that Whiskers was almost certainly drawing from encoded memories of his late sister, mapping out exactly what regions and centers of neural activity are intercepted by the PSI-type field will take extensive neuroimaging. We do not have at this site. Currently, we only have less precise portable equipment. However, our experiences so far are eerily in line with folk knowledge and folk explanations regarding the being's access to desires, and we can begin to infer it has access to certain portions of the limbic system. Alright, just gotta feed him one more time. Sheepy. Give him some cashews. It appears to have been sufficient. Excellent. Very proud of you, Grandpa. Grandpa grunts in appreciation and locomotes towards its favorite corner. Yay, he has eaten his food. He recently emptied his stomach. Alright, we better go check. Oh my god, there's a key. <laughs> Brother threw up a key. Okay. Alright. Grandpa accedes to your request, approaches the bars, and begins to unknit its skin. The inner grandpa, though still not fully formed, is revealed. It may be fruitful to speak with it if it can respond. Oh. So it's like, it's like, uh, oh, it's like a cocoon. With a great deal of effort, Grandpa gurgles fragmented thoughts through its ill-formed lips. <laughs> Mother. Ah. Well. dark spiny filaments that make up the majority of Grandpa's body begin to oscillate rapidly. Yeah. 
hair behind your eyes. I can taste it. Of course, the shell, with a great deal of effort, in my body. All human skin around me give more, grow more to fit. <laughs> oh, fr wet and frustrated sputtering noise. <laughs> Goodbye, Grandpa. Hmm. Alright. Now, is there a door we can unlock with the key? Oh, there was. In the, in the cabinet. Yes. Oh. A photo of your mother as a young woman. the rest of this. Hmm. Interesting. God, I know there's some kind of story emerging. I'm just wondering how it's all going to end. Alright. Save. And I think we're done for the day. So let's end the week. Got a bunch of food load of fucking documents. Knowledge you acquired this week has given you access to a new conversation topic. Language. Week three. There is a lot more to this game than I was anticipating. It's very interesting, isn't it? Mrs. Richards approached me the other day in order to remark on Adrian's development. She noted how much more at ease she appeared when called upon in class or when asked to participate in group exercises. I told her I had seen this change happening as well, and that as much as I would like to take credit for it, I can only guess dimly at what might be reshaping her attitude. Oh, thank you for the gifted member side. Thank you very much, my love. Mrs. Richards posited was perhaps Adrienne's family moving into their grandfather's property that caused the change. It apparently is out in the country and in a wooded area full of wide open space and far from the bustle and noise of the city. The grandfather, Dr. Jacob Hart, had jointly purchased the land with the university he was employed with and began constructing what he was intending to be a satellite campus for a burgeoning psychological anthropology program he had a hand in establishing. Only one building ever ended up being constructed after Dr. Hart died in a car accident when driving back from the property one day. Eerily, at almost at the exact same time, a grad student who was assisting Dr. Hart on some sort of project at the property vanished without a trace. The property sat in disguise for years, as it was tied up in legal battles between Dr. Hart's next of kin, the university, the vanished grad student's family, and the other students Dr. Hart was working with. Eventually, the case was settled out of court. Only recently did the property fall into the possession of Adrienne's mother. Obviously, I was not going to relay this whole tragic story to Adrienne, who for all I know believes her grandpa to still be living in the basement of his home. Sides, I thought. She might already know all of this. Perhaps the elaborate story she was constructing was her own way of escaping the morbid details of a life cut short by the cruel force of fate and the cynical adults who squabbled in the aftermath. I determined perhaps the storytelling she was and continues to engage in should not be encouraged by me, at least not in the way I went about it before. I made active inquiries into her strange fantasy of a semi-sentient ball of skin. When I saw Adrienne, I did not bring up her grandpa or ask questions about his growth, 
Adrian could not stop talking about it, however, I had no choice but to weather her bizarre and enthusiastic effusions about her new best friend. Adrienne, maybe we can talk about something else. I'm not sure I'm following you. Exactly. He's gotten so big. He has so many whiskers that come out and I can see them move around when I think about him. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm so happy Grandpa is back. He's so much cooler than Mum and Dad. Once again, for what it's worth, I have put down the story she told me as best I could. Adrienne once again told me about growing her grandpa. Hey. Oh, I mean, we have a key, but I don't know if that won't work. Ooh. Kiwi? Oh, yay. Nice. I've got a kiwi. All right, mate, I've got a kiwi for you here. We're gonna... We're gonna be... Gonna be growing my fucking grandpa, mate. Nice. I still don't have any light for this one. What's in here? Hmm, nothing. And of course this one is all... all used up. Okay. Well, that's that, I guess. Oh, you didn't do the top draw. Never mind. Never mind. Do the top draw. What? What is that? What is that? It looks like a doll's head, upside down. Ugh, kind of scared me. I don't like that. I don't like that. Those little baby heads. like an onion. Makes me want to cry. Potato. Potato. Nice. Indecision. Complicated word. Complicated worth indeed. Complicated word. Sorry. Not worth. we can't cut yet. Maybe we'll get something from Grandpa. Okay, let's go check him out. Let's go have a look. We're gonna feed him three things. I thought that's at the slutty corner for a second. <laughs> Oh, you examine Grandpa noting its movements, respiration, and general mood. Grandpa's gums are bleeding slightly, and its skin seems overly dry. It may need a food packed with vitamin C. A kiwi fruit would be an excellent remedy. Well, it just so happens that I have kiwi fruit on me right now. Potato. Kiwi. Completely dried out. Okay, this one we can hide the fiberglass in. 
Kiwi. That'll be good for you, Grandpa. Hold up. Grandpa grunts in appreciation. We did it. Okay, okay. We're gonna go to the kitchen corner. I'm gonna prepare some food. Potato with fiberglass. I don't really know why we do this. I guess it's an experiment. <gasps> Pear! That's probably soft as well. Stwapui. Nice. Alright. Go to Grandpa. Let's have a look at this again. Feed. Grandpa, would you like some food? Oh yeah, of course, that's why we're doing it, to get shit out of his stomach. Alright, now we can feed him the strawberry. And the lettuce. <laughs> the amount of people pointing out that Grandpa kind of looks like a... Grandpa, more like Grand Pussy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we did it. Alright, Grandpa. Oh, the scissors. Nice. Alright, we will be teaching Grandpa life. Life. <laughs> within Grandpa. There's a place. So sad. Life. At week three. <laughs> At week three of Growth 24, Whiskers appeared to recall some information from a previous growth cycle. We cannot be sure that this was really the case. For all we know, what we interpreted as it was recollecting this information, was it really drawing semantic content from one of our recollections of it and redeploying it without our rationality or co contextualization? For the sake of our safety, and for the sake of scientific inquiry, we are attempting to draw out from whiskers whether it somehow retains knowledge from previous cycles in its morphalactic nucleus. We did not think it was possible the nucleus, though complex and incredible in its regenerative abilities, was capable of this, and that the nerve network that grew from it made up the base of whiskers' mind. And so we are now attempting to ask whiskers, as best we can, if it has ever died, what it might remember if it did. You step away from the bars and store the module card at the document table. Cycles, eh? Hmm. We will teach him again. Indecision. It's a long word. <laughs> We are introducing the latest growth of whiskers to more subtle social cues in testing its ability to judge mental states of participants in conversation. <laughs> Scorn! The semantic content that flows to whiskers via its psi PSI field is still becoming muddled slipped without distinction into conversation, although our intention of instilling it in a solid theory of mind will perhaps make it begin to understand that we do not know what it knows or know what we are sending to it. 
one would think a theory of mind seems to develop as part of its maturation process. In order to hunt sapient beings, it must be able to deceive them. In order to deceive it, it must be able to make certain metacognitive judgments. For example, if their deception appears to be working, or how one ought to be deceived. He may never see it develop a theory of mind any time soon, as Dr. Hart has disallowed a cycle of whiskers to growth, and the cycle of whiskers growth to live into the beginnings of maturity. You step away from the bars and store the module card at the document table. Right, we did it. Now we can explore a little more. Although we should take a look at the study corner. Search the file cabinets. I think with the scissors we should be able to get rid of the, the growth. Maybe there's something behind it. Alright, nothing there. Let's have a look at this. It's Ruhithi. Thank you for the 20 gifted members, my darling. Nothing in here. Nothing. Researcher will seal off the enclosure bars, ensuring minimal gas leakage during the later fumigating process, and then retrieve the burn barrel and place it near the, ex the enclosure. Allow at least 48 hours of time where the current growth cycle experiences no human-related stimuli. Do not enter the enclosure area nor any part of the basement. Ideally, you will not be on the grounds at all. After 48 hours, two researchers will enter the basement wearing their assigned mirror mask, mirror apron, and powered air purifying respirator. The, re the researcher will use the vent system to fumigate the enclosure area, wait 30 minutes, and then use the fan system to ventilate the enclosure. Keep the fans running through steps 3 and 4. Re-enter the enclosure area wearing your assigned mirror masks and aprons. Alpha Chorus, thank you. That's very sweet. The organism may or may not be in complete dormancy. If it is not in full dormancy, be assured that its capacity to act against you will be greatly diminished. With your assigned power drills, quickly remove any enclosure bars needed to access the organism. Put them aside later for reinstallation. Put the organism into the burn barrel. Incinerate the organism thoroughly. Wait for any smoke to be properly cleared by the fan system. Turn off the fans. One researcher will retrieve the nucleus from the ash and place it in the mirror box. The other researcher will sift through the ash and place any other substantial remains in the biohazard bin in the room outside of the enclosure area. The bin is locked for safety purposes. The code is 323 Researchers will fill out a termination form and leave it for Dr. Hart. Remember that. <sighs> nice. Alright, so there's a code we've learned. sound effect when you pick up trash and then suddenly you come in here and the sound is different that has a big impact it's scary i like it 
Crystal, darling, thank you for the ox super. So generous of you, baby. Glad I can help. And Nanyi, thank you very much as well. Hello. Anthropoid remnant 2. A self-sufficient animal. Form knit together from years of ambient thoughts left to crawl around in the basement. Grandpa may enjoy the flesh. God, that's alive. Anthropoid remnant, was that an experiment like Grandpa? Also, that looks like a face. Little friends. Hmm. Comes. Is he going to look different? He's a little taller now. Wish. Language. Ugh. I don't like that. <laughs> Prairie Pete Pie, that's very, very sweet of you. Thank you. Grandpa is old. Lives were easier before I made myself to speak, and before you made clothes to wear, and rules to obey. Your grandpa remembers. I have learned much in many lives and deaths. Keep speaking with me. I love talking with you, and learning from you. And it helps your grandpa so much. Soon, I will be everything you would like me to be. Aww. The little ones, they grew like seeds off my skin. Worms fall off my body. Thoughts falling off of me. Dreams put there by others. When I was under the ground, I made only very few. Shepherds walked through the grave, and I saw them lusting for their wives, and my skin made their loving faces. I called them out into the darkness with their loved voices. One by one, I took their shapes and their skin and their blood. That was a time ago. Before stone buildings. Before the orders of angels and words and symbols. Mm, sorry. Grandpa is thinking. There's a little left over from others, too. I am still so hungry for flesh. Part of me is... I would even eat one of them that fell off of me. I can't help it. They grow off of me. They fall off and grow in the dark. Grow around me. Interesting. So he has a long and learned memory. See, the thing they were saying about cycles makes me think that perhaps every time one of these creatures is created, it ha retains the memories it, of its previous voices, or the previous whatevers. Anya, Angel, Sola, and Aura, thank you guys very much. He said he wanted to eat flesh. Ooh. All right. Go for it. Particularly well received, your offering of flesh stirs something within Grandpa. From within the folds of its body, a wiry proboscis like appendage begins to emerge. It may be worth taking a look at this after the feeding. Knowledge you have recently acquired has given you access to a new conversation topic. Proboscis. I see. And he locomotes towards his favorite corner. Hmm, very baby, I'm glad you missed me. It's good to see you again. And 
Cello, thank you very much. You motion to Grandpa to approach and point to the thin protuberance. Grandpa silently ambles closer to the bars and fully extends it towards you. A minuscule needle extends from its tip. There appears to be one more thing you must give, if only for the sake of propriety. What do we cut it off? I have, I have a pair, mate. What? Grandpa has appreciated your blood offering. It will receive a symbol or totem from you now, although only one per offering. Oh god. As the blood fed proboscis retracts back into the folds of fabric, you step away from the bars. Yeesh. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and end the week there. Yeesh. <clears throat> Mm. Mm. Oh, sleepy. Nexus, Akiyuki, thank you for the super. And thank you, Gladys and Ryan Hertz, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm sleepy too. Maybe we should cuddle up and go to sleep together after we finish the game. Mm. I'd like that. Week four. A month. The time I have to spend compiling an evaluation on Adrienne is almost up, and I still can't say what to make of her changes in mood. It is, of course, the case that children of Adrienne's age are nowhere near finished learning and growing, and may have to simply be happy that Adrienne was able to improve her attitude. So sorry, thank you, and Sephardisian. <laughs> oh, I've got a bunch of monster fuckers in here, I see. Mo, well, thank you. I may have to simply be happy that Adrienne was able to improve her attitude. However, something in the odd and occasionally grotesque stories she continues to bring up still strikes me as meaningful. How has your week been, Adrienne? Grandpa is almost ready. He's almost finished. Well, sort of. Ah. He's almost as big as his shell now. He has a face, he can talk pretty well, and almost has legs. I see. As before, I could have put down the story she told me as best I could. Once again, Adrienne told me about growing her grandpa. Okay, well, I guess we have to go through the trash piles. Find more things to feed him, etc. Thank you, August. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Roselle. Ooh. Bar of soap. Okay, we can definitely hide that. I reckon we'll go there at the end of the game. Bulbous growth, is that gonna... Is that gonna be a thing? Is there still stuff in there? Yeah, we can get more stuff from here. Good. Ricky, thank you very much. Good night, my darling. And Nanny, thank you very much. Studying medical statistics. Oh, I'm sorry that things aren't going well for you. I'm here, okay? I'm right here, baby, it's okay. I'm just going to play this game together. Aha! More food! Anthropoid Remnant 1, a self-sufficient animal form knit together from years of ambient thoughts left to crawl around the basement. Years to crawl and now it'll be fed to Grandpa. I don't like this face. It's gross. I don't like it. <laughs> Meaning. I 
see. Thank you, Xu Ying babe, so sorry. Moyen Chen and Ms. Lin, thank you. Glad you guys are enjoying the stream today. And the Lin Bing, thank you. Looks like this cabinet doesn't really have a lot of extra stuff in it, but I'll check nonetheless, even though this is the one with the fucking kitty faces in it. I don't like that. I don't like that much at all. Miru, thank you for the Akasupa. I like everything about you too, baby. Bogang, thank you very much as well. on the neck right now, that would make me f very happy. I'd really enjoy that. Ah, uh, nothing yet. Okay. I believe that's everything. I checked this trash box. We can snuggle a little up, Chorus and Olivia. Of course, we can. Come close, everybody. He just looks like a normal dude now, if a little weird. He seems fatigued and anemic. Some of its spine's a bit brittle. Perhaps it would be more cooperative if fed an iron rich meal like meat. We have a lot of flesh. Mio Angelo, thank you. And Afua, thank you. Teach him the word meaning. He might be becoming more human-like over time, 
but he still got that grand pussy. Still hitting us with that grussy. Thank you, Citrusanzi. We further delve into the abstraction with whiskers, partially, or perhaps for the most part, for the purpose of determining the origin of its recollections that precede its death. Thank you, Rika. Dr. Hart has begun to theorize that in the process of death, the structure of whiskers is compressed back into the morphalactic nucleus, and then later, upon re-establishing the nerve netting that is laced through its spines, <sighs> is slowly reassembled and redeployed as needed. I do not think this is the case, for I can plainly see that for growth cycles in which Whiskers is not receiving our pronunciation and vocabulary lessons, that its capacity general for comprehending its environment is greatly diminished. And in the simulated conversations we carry out, Whiskers struggles greatly, or else does not participate. In any case, we will pass on with our lessons and heed Dr. Hart's caution regarding terminating the growth cycle before Whiskers' allotted growth time passes, or if it appears to be becoming just a little too confident at appearing human. Hmm. Let's teach him one more time. God, look at him. Let's teach him one more time. Symbol. Hmm. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Alexi Nurse, Tang Tang, Aurora, Sola, Nana77, and Reika. Thank you. Kuyuki, thank you as well. Nothing written here, or if there was, it was thoroughly erased. Sasmus and Chao, thank you. And Mohamal, thank you very much. Okay. Time to feed. Time to feed Grimba. Mm, I'm sleepy. Left, thank you very much. Let's feed him. Good night, kisses. Of course. Right, got some anthropoids. You want them? After a totem is offered. Oh, I see. Hang on. The proboscis, perhaps? Okay, so we'll have to do something that provokes the proboscis to come out. Let me see. Hang on a minute, hang on. down bad today, what the fuck? Theologic Sarita, thank you. Haru, thank you. Ashton, he, him, thank you very much. Sena, thank you for the Akasupa. My love. Shooting babe, thank you. Do some bedtime exercises, really? What did you have in mind? Yurika, Yurisa, Popo, Pur Pur Pur, <laughs> and Pista, thank you very much. Yeah, I know. Alright. Try this again. Shrenja, May, and Moy Chen, thank you. Alright. Do 
Houston, thank you. Alright, so we can now check what he threw up. See if we can. Melissa, thank you. I'll yawn later if if I wind up yawning. It's got to be real, you know? Liz Chan, thank you. And check for it. Finds it palatable, does he? I was just gonna have to go check it. Three two three two four five. Thank you for reminding me, guys. Oh Jesus, that's long. We'll read that later. <laughs> Another doll. Okay. Hang on a minute, you, you motherfucker. Three two three two four five. something else instead of playing the game? I mean, I'm enjoying the game. I don't know about you. Photo of your father as a young man. Oh, wow. I like his hair. <laughs> it's like the, it's like the, it's like the, the nasty grandma from Three Billboards. She's, she's like, I like him. I like his hair. Thank you so sorry. And thank you, so. Anything else in here? Just a photo of our dad. Hmm. I guess that's that. Rebecca M, thank you very much. Now, hmm. Let's try to communicate. We've got some new topics. No response. No response, Grandpa. Oh. What a shame. It's like, oh, clean. Yay. It's got to be something new in here. It's got to be. Hmm. Love you too, Akaras. It's very sweet of you. scary game. It is interestingly calming, isn't it? Can we feed him the flesh?
for a totem as often like with the proboscis. Okay, we may have to just end the week now. Hmm. Miss you too. Who could that be? Come in. Ah, Adrian. Good to see you. How's you with little early? I'm Adrian. I suppose they have some time now. How have you been? How is your grandpa doing? That's why I wanted to, to talk to you. Something happened. Oh, what happened? Nothing bad, I hope. No, nothing bad different, I think. Maybe even good. Well, I'll tell you about it. Well, last night, something woke me up. There was this noise at first. It was like it came from the walls. I could hear it from my bedroom, but there was something else. Something calling. I could hear it just barely. I was afraid somehow Grandpa hurt himself. I had to go and find out. I went downstairs and the vent, the place where I first found Grandpa, or what I grew him with, was open. Do you remember how I told you about the vent in the ceiling, behind the bars? I was thinking he had climbed up into it. He had gotten so big, he could have done that. Maybe he would gotten trapped somehow in the vent. I had to go see. I got inside. I heard the calling again. More clearly this time. Grandpa was definitely in the vent somewhere. I could feel him hearing my thoughts. I got that weird feeling, a sense in the air. I had to go forward. As I moved closer, the vent had stuff in it, the kind of slimy, hairy stuff Grandpa would leave around a lot. He was definitely close. There's gonna be something scary around here. Something was there at the end, but it wasn't Grandpa. It looked maybe like he had made it through. It was slumped in the corner. It had a weird mouth. And it had its lungs on the outside and drew in just enough air to call out. And then it just stopped. Stopped breathing. And something was hanging over me. Oh. Jump scare. Oh, never mind. And then I woke up in my bed. In your bed? Adrienne, it sounds like it was just a quite dreadful dream. Are you alright, by the way? Your face is twitching like you're about to have a violent sneeze. It's fine. It's just Grandpa, you see. It took me a little while to figure out, but... <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Sunshine, Kuro Ishida, Koyuki, Kylie Kane, Kairi, Nebula, and Ping. Thank you very much. So sorry, thank you. Give myself a headband. <laughs> Later when I was brushing my teeth I saw one of Grandpa's whiskers just poking out Of the space under my eye I started to remember how in the vent he hid inside of me It was so fast Oh my god it is FNAF But soon I started to feel him sliding around in my head Behind my forehead And behind my eyes and nose It doesn't hurt at all it's just ticklish. I'm glad I can be, be with him. Oh, I, I can feel him now. I think he wants to meet you. Part of him is moving down my arm. Oh, uh, I'm starting to get worried, Adrienne. You really should not be twitching like this. I should walk you to the nurse's office. Come on, let's go. You should really meet him. I've told you so much about him. Here. 
What are you doing, Adrienne? You're starting to look very ill. Please, just, just wait. Just stay still. He's gathering, waiting at my fingertips. Why do you look like that? You don't have to be afraid. Look. <gasps> oh, there are two endings. Fuck. Man. Man, how do you get the other ending? D cell. Okay, okay. How do you get the other ending? Let me let me let me Google it. How to, uh, we failed the vibe check, unfortunately. Oh my grandpa endings. That was interesting. We shouldn't give him meat. Don't feed him the flesh. Ah. Well, we'd have to overwrite it in that way. I could just skip through the dialogue. Yeah, because I must have saved after I gave him the thing. Hmm. I'm not sure. It's already been two hours. I'm starting to get a bit sleepy. Ugh. The vegan grandpa. Yeah, that's the way you save it. Uh, that was a fun game. That was really interesting. So, I did have it in mind that we could try playing some other games as well. But that would be up to you guys. I'm starting to get a bit sleepy. Uh, but I understand for a lot of you it's only 11pm. So, uh, I don't really want to leave you alone before midnight. So... Hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to play three games, but this one turned out to be longer than I thought it might be, so it's it's difficult. Hmm. <laughs> There's fucking sirens outside. Ay 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 fucking ambulances outside. Crazy, crazy shit that is. Phoenix Jihang, I soda, and take dollar and reach go. Thank you very much. One more game? Well Alright, let's do Iron Lung. Let's do Iron Lung, because from what I know that isn't very long. Okay. Let me get that booted up now. Let's do iron lung and then. Oh, it's loud. Oh, good thing I turned the, I turned the speakers off for you guys. Okay, there we go. And for the game, iron lung. Where is it? It's not showing up. Hmm. Ha! Huh. There we go. This game looks really interesting. Visually, it looks super cool. Okay. Decades ago, every known star and habitable planet vanished, leaving only those who were on space stations or starships. This event became known as the Quiet Rapture. With supplies dwindling, and infrastructure crumbling, survivors are searching for any trace of natural resources in a universe of barren moons, lit by the ghost light of vanished stars. One such moon holds a strange anomaly, an ocean of blood. You are a convict, tasked 
with exploring this anomaly in a makeshift submarine nicknamed the Iron Lung. It was not designed for this depth, so you will be welded inside and the forward window will be closed. There was no time for training. Oh wait, the screen's fro- what the fuck? The screen is frozen for you guys. What the hell? What the hell? Why? Why is that? Why is that? Huh? What? 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 Why? Why did it do that? I don't understand. Why? Oh, SpongeBob. Why? <laughs> Hold on. Beginning at descent. Is that working? I mean, I can't see anything either yet. So. Cruising depth in roughly 40 seconds. Stand by. Oh, you guys can't see it either. What? Um, what the hell? Yeah. What the hell? That's strange. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll just restart the game. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. It's not what what the fuck? Why isn't it working? Finny foe, so sorry, thank you. Tender dream, thank you for the Aka Super. Valeria. Mm. Sleep well, my darling. What the fuck? It's not working. What the hell? Oh my god. This is annoying. What's the problem? So you hear me say, what's the problem, baby? Maybe I'm in love. Right, you know, maybe it's because I've selected it in multiple thingies. So, just close that. Open it on this one. Refresh it somehow. See, it's working in my preview window, but it's not doing anything for you guys. I'll go to settings. Maybe it's full screen. Maybe that's the problem. Iron Long, you bastard! Why is it so difficult? Why is Yogurt Night so difficult? Oh, there we go. There we go. I got it. Okay. There was no time for training. If successful, you earn your freedom. I read this out before, so, you know, you guys better have been listening. <laughs> oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? What the fuck? Where'd it go? Cruising depth in roughly 40 seconds. Stand by. Where'd it go? The window disappeared. It's like below this. What the fuck? I'm gonna have to close this again. What the fuck just happened? I literally pressed like the top window and then it just disappeared beneath the screen. What the fuck? What the hell? Okay, there we go. One more time. One more try for posterity. One more time for, for, for the good of mankind.
decades ago, every known star and habitable planet vanished, leaving only you, bitch. Beginning a descent. Beginning a descent. Cruising depth in roughly 40 seconds. Stand by. The depth, all you can see is the depth goes down, and we can uh, actually see, see something in front of us, like the bubbles. Okay, let's have a look. Approaching maximum depth. Uh, the hole's sealing it, but it's still holding strong. Closing porthole shielding. Oh, and there the window is shut, and we are locked in. We're starting to lose rate of signal. You'll be at cruise depth soon, so risk and be careful. You're on your own. And we're on our own. From this moment on, we're on our own. A very strong opening. Alright. What does that do? I don't know. Oh, this is so, uh, it's so claustrophobic, I don't... Conducted an exploration of Moon 85, leading to the discovery of a fourth blood ocean. A trench beneath the ocean's surface has several points of interest. Your task is to photograph these points of interest with the SM-13's forward camera. Photos must be taken within two units of the specified position and ten degrees of the specified angle. You can also use the camera to help with navigation. Only photos taken at the specified points of interest will be saved. Since you can't navigate by sight, pay attention to your coordinates and consult the map. The proximity indicators next to the sub's controls will trigger if you're getting close to an obstacle. Okay. So where's the map then? <laughs> query? Hello world. Unknown query. Well, I don't fucking know, bruv. Okay, the map. Oh god, where are we? Okay, look at our coordinates. 182 by 116. Yes, so one... 82 by 116, so we're around there, and we need to get there. Okay. So I guess we'll... And then we'll go forward. Okay, what coordinates is this? X, 322, Y, 186. No, we're going away in the air. What the fuck? We're going away? Okay, never mind. Alright, rotate, 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 rotate. Me, 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 me. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What about this way? Maybe it's a little faster. Alright, I guess we just gotta keep moving. picture of it. Alright, it's not really anything I can see. Let's keep moving. Ooh, uh oh. Okay, never mind. Never mind. We're gonna have to go around. Oh, this is quite this is quite freaky, honestly. <laughs> oh, God. So close. I just fucking crashed the bastard. 
We've got to. We've got to go so far. All right, we're at one seven five. I want to go to three two two. Okay, so we're going to turn around. Okay, so I've learned my lesson. If you go too close to the crash to anything, you will crash. Everything seems to get me closer. Every fucking, every time you move, it feels like you're getting closer to them. Okay, we're on the Y axis. That's good. We just need to go along the X. So we're a little too far along with the Y, but the X, we still need to keep moving on, so... on the x-axis. Don't ask me about the fucking red wire. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Okay, that's off to that side. 322186. Can I change my altitude? Or do I have to be rotated a certain way? Oh, it's fire extinguisher. Cool. Oh no. This is not an expedition, it is an execution. When they put you in here, they don't want you to return. And even if you do, and even if they keep their promises, what freedom waits for you? A few dying ships in a sea of dead stars. If there is still hope, it lies beyond the veil. Hope in this void is as, is as illusionary as the starlight. I will choose to breathe my last here at the bottom of an ocean unseen, unheard, and uncontrolled. They will get their execution, and I will get my freedom. Jesus. So how... Alright, so that looks like altitude. Unless, of course, it's about rotation. It says A, so... 33. It's the last thing we can edit, so... Just gotta give it a try. Well, that's definitely something. And, and 
10 degrees with the specified angle. Okay, that must be it. You can also use the camera to help with navigation, blah, blah, blah. Since you can't navigate by sight, pay attention to your coordinates. What was that? Well, there was something out there. <laughs> Scary, scary. All right, we got it. Nice. Okay. X three seven eight. So we've just got to make our way all the, all the way across. Okay. X three seven eight. Turn the game's volume down a bit. <laughs> okay. Away from you. Three, seven, eight. Mostly because I just don't want to scream into the mic. That would be bad. Two, six, three. Okay, so we're actually getting really close now. Was it three seven eight two six three? Okay. God, I'm scared. I feel like it could just hit me with anything at any moment. Seven eight two six three and then fifty rotation. <sighs> okay, almost there. There we go. Another sort of yeah toothy lo looking thing. All right, X five sixty. I think that was an obstacle. through this. Is the only show up on those corners? No, never mind. I'm going to have to go around. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I hate it. I hate it.
just curious. God damn. Alright. Maybe we'll go up here. X259Y. So we go up. Like this way. Oh, fuck off, you cunt. just despise this. This is some nasty shit. Whoever made this is uh, a little fucked up. Sound design. Oh, saving progress. Thank fucking god. Okay, so we don't restart, per se. 4.06. Do I dare go forward? Two, seven, three. I'm actually gonna like take my headphones off. I'm really scared right now. Oh god. Two five one. Two five nine, right, we made it. it sounds like music. Oh that'll be what we're taking the picture of. Okay. Alright. Why don't we go up this way? X one eighty Y five seven six. area, so we sort of, instead of, right, okay, that's the mistake I was making. <sighs> Thanks, Kayanon. Baba 2.0, Arashi, Arashi, Naga, Mona, Subtle Jewels, and uh, Erisa Man Akuma, Chen Chen, thank you very much as well. We're heading back. Heading back. We've got three down. Boys love and taxation. I'm glad that you had a long day. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for those of you guys who don't know, uh, it is no shave November at the moment, so I've been growing for, the, uh, I'm gonna shave at the start of December, but for November I've been growing a beard, so yes, yeah, so you guys can have a little bit of beard ASMR. Give you guys a little bit of a chin bristle. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Foxy Brain. All right. Thank you very much. And the late cat. Thank you very much. Anyone going to sleep? I hope you sleep well. Right, so where are we now? Why? Oh, if we need to get to Y three hundred a bit. you guys enjoyed my beard ASMR. You know, at times, since debut where I've forgotten to shave, I'm always worried about doing ASMR and you guys hearing the bristles, because I was like, oh no, I don't want them to know I'm not always clean shaven. I am clean shaven most of the time, but, you know, a man forgets. Gillette, the best a man can get. Right, three, two, five ought to be fine. And then we'll go this way. Just hoping I don't run out of oxygen. Yeah, that'll be fine. shot with I guess maybe that's just a scripted event I don't see anything I can actually repair it with can't repair it you just gotta go fast oh dear all right then all right so just gotta kind of go straight ahead God, little, little events like that really do give you the creeps. Right, 560, 277, so we're going to go down this way. I'm really excited for Christmas. Really excited. Let's hope I make it out of this river of blood long enough to see it. Just looking forward to spending more time with my family. 560. Okay. Oh, shit, 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 shit. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What was that?
for the gifted members. Come on, don't taste, don't chase me right now. If you if you tried to jump scare me, I might honestly just I might honestly punch somebody. If somebody jumped out like to try and lightheartedly prank me while I'm playing this game, I would just I would just throw them into the ground. said in that one song, isn't everybody going through tough times? Every day above ground is a great day. <laughs> Gotta remember that when you're in situations like this. But then again, we're not above ground, we're actually underwater at the moment, so it's actually technically not true. And so X, six, so we've got a fair ways to go there. Around 750 we'll see an obstacle. Thank you, Suming and Steffi Ackerman as well. Right, we're at 250, 260 now, so that's around the 7. This is quite nerve-wracking. 
of a 300 Y. Two fifty-eight. Okay. Ah, oh, we've gone past it, right? Wait, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, we haven't. Eight fifty. Okay, we're almost. Th that's eight sixty-four. Okay, we're almost there. Eight six Two five eight eight six three. That'll do it. Two oh nine. Why is that fucking sound? Two oh nine. Looks like a structure. It looks man-made. Yes. Right squared, you're right, I am feeling the exact same way. The silence is quite something. So now there's only four left. We're just gonna have to navigate back through. And this looks like a sort of unexplored thing we could go through, so just gonna have to go all the way back around there. Okay. Almost there guys, almost there. Once we get up to 280, let's say, I'll turn around. It's not heading out of here. God, this game is something else, man. Wait, where are we? 845. It's about right there. And then 268. I think we're sort of caught there. So I'm going to make a U turn. Oh, Jesus. Seven two. Yeah, that's about perfect. I think we'll be all right if we just keep heading this way. <laughs> Fucking hell! Fucking shit! My dick on a tit. All right. I think we made it. 
Okay, let's try to avoid that pillar there. Round like that. Nothing. Okay, I don't know what it was that happened there, but it was something. Yeah, where are we now? Three, five, four. Wait, why three, five, four? Oh, we're up here now. Wait, yeah, three, five, four, so around here. And then 576. So we're around here, so we just have to go up like this way. I don't know what that bump was, and there's no way we can even check. <laughs> Thank you, Mia Bing, Sefa, and uh, Dude Out as well. Thank They call it an Xbox 360. Because when you see one, you do a 360 and then you walk away. of world building in this is so effective. I fucking hate it. Five... Alright, why? Four, eight, seven. Gotta keep going up. So this is 520. Five, seven, five. Sixty-three. So we're already on the Y axis, that's good. Set down a tiny bit like that. Whatever that ambient sound is, it can fuck off. Whatever that ambient sound is, it can fuck right off. 63, 520. see Father Tenchi down here and give me a fucking heart attack. Nice. Okay. There we go. And then it's rotation 63. Bones. Boner. So... Alright, three left. We've still got a bunch of oxygen remaining. That's good. We're up here, so I guess if we just go down, go go left at a slight angle, we 
should be okay. God damn, this game is really good. <laughs> and you wouldn't think so, would you? From the gameplay, you really wouldn't think so. You really wouldn't think that something this, like... What, why? What, where are we on? Why? 509. Okay. You really wouldn't think from such simplistic gameplay that it would be really this gripping, but Jesus Christ, it's just all the little things that add together. They make it perfect. Five. Okay, cool. We're in the right place. And this is around... Oh, all the way back to 300. We gotta go. Once we get up to like five two five, I'm gonna turn to go at ninety degrees. Oh shit. Okay, never mind. Okay. That seems to be good. Alright, two seventy. Get back to three hundred. Nice, okay. <sighs> it's surprisingly satisfying to get things right. But I will say this the thing about the um I will say the thing about the like taking the pictures and not knowing what you're gonna see on the other side, it's fucking awful. I hate it. I hate it. Ah, <sighs> this tension is something. Okay, we're on the second level. We've only got three left, so we should be all right. Oblivion Avenue, thank you for the super. Yeah, you get some sleep, baby. It's gonna be okay. You take a nap in my lap. All right, three, three sixty. So we're out here now. Three, five, six. We're out here. Okay, let's go out this way a tiny bit. Go. Hang on a minute. 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 I know something's in front of me. I'm just trying to figure this out. What? Five, four, nine. Five, four, nine. And then three, five, four. Five, four, nine. Three. Five, four. We're right there. Okay. Maybe there's a really specific path through this, like, muddy area. and gently. You guys like it when I go in nice and gently, right? Okay. Yeah, very fitting the police show up after that one. Three, 
We're at 571. So we're right in the middle of this. If there's any if there's any way to a man's heart, it's a very sexual Beyblade pickup line. Okay. Three two five seven four one. Oh fuck. Ow. Put it out, you fools. Put it out. <laughs> I got it. Well, that won't have, that won't have been great for the oxygen, will it? Okay. How did that happen? I couldn't tell you. Something must have sparked a spark. I keep hearing the crackling in my own mouth and I think it's fucking fire starting. Actually, looks like a wyvern or some kind of serpent face. You guys are being very flattering, by the way. Thank you, Evil Punk. All right, we turn around, and now we go through this tiny little crevice. Ay ay ay! Huh? All right. So we'll start. 300 X 660 Y Ah, oh, God wind you're cursing. Okay, and we'll go along up until 2.30. 2.30. 
200. See how this works. So we're at two five seven two five. So we're up there, so we're gonna have to. Oh god, this thing is very thin, isn't it? Why six five seven? Yeah, that should be fine. avoid them, they just have to be going off both at once. see something terrifying here. I can just, I can just feel it. Oh. It's almost like the, the fact that you can't tell what it is that makes it worse. Alright, I'm getting out of here. One more to go. Excuse me, is this the second to last picture for Iron Lung? No, this is Patrick. You know, maybe something had grabbed onto us and it just let us go. Of course, you can have a little tapping. I've kind of forgotten about the ASMR aspect. I'm just trying to survive out here. Not bad. 
And then this one doesn't look quite as finicky. It's bad, but it's not as bad. And then maybe that's like the exit area. Okay. No, this is Patrick. Re... Are we out? X320. Alright, we're out. Nice. Okay. Easier than I thought it would be. So we're going to have to start worrying around 675Y. Okay. Six seven five Y and then about 470. Okay, so we're getting close now. Saving progress. 675, there we go. Thank you for the super. <laughs> Good luck with your finals, by the way. Oh, shit. Just curious. during the Black Friday sale? Uh, not really. Uh, I just made quite a big purchase. I bought a camera, and it's all here now, apart from my EF adapter, uh, which I need in order to start using it, but it was quite expensive, so I'm not gonna spend much else. Shit. Right, we're almost there. Where are we now? 454X... X550, alright, we're here, let's keep going, move up that way, god, this is getting nasty. Oh, it's starting to fill with blood, oh dear, okay, um, oh dear. Oh god, I'm panicking. I feel like we're so short for time. Alright, X600, where is that? 600 is there, okay. And we're gonna go up to 7... 7, a little before 7... Wait, we're already... Bought. What the fuck? Wait, 750. around there, and now we can turn right. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Alright, X. We're going to have to keep going until 680 or so. Okay. Okay, 
Side, I know it's gonna come six seven five six seven five eight two eight two nine five all right everyone it's been nice knowing you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I shouted guys, oh no, that genuinely really freaked me out. I did not expect it to jump scare me before, before I managed to press the button. The expedition ultimately raised more questions than answers. Satellite images showed pieces of the SM-13 scattered all over the bottom of the trench, as though it had been torn apart by some huge beast. The wreckage cannot be reached at this time, no photographs have been recovered. The stars shine pale as bones. The moon is a lifeless corpse, its ocean a gaping wound, the universe, what's left of it, is dying. But somewhere in the void there must be hope. Oh, Jesus Christ. Beyond the veil. That was really, really, really good. I'm so glad I made myself play that. <sighs> Nekosaka, Miri Lively, Lulu Elf, Masato, thank you very much for the supers, guys. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> okay, I was going to play another game, but I feel like I'm really... I'm not shaken up, per se, but I, I feel like I need a break <laughs> after that. that. That game was something else. That was insane. I really enjoyed that, every second of it. Moin Chan and S Vanilla, thank you for the gifted members. I... Oof. This game... God, what an incredible atmosphere. I know that's what everyone would say about it, but I think there's something so remarkable about limiting the player's vision and just having, like, you know, the most helpless and slow moment of mode of movement that bit, that, I mean, the jump, the ending jump scare really got me, but like the second to last picture you take with the eye, oh god. It's so good at building tension, it's like an hour of slowly waiting for your own death. It was fantastic. Sakri, Crystal, and Summer, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna call it there. But I'm going to be honest, that was like, that was a really fun experience. And I'd like to play more games in more of an ASMR format. I feel like the ASMR worked right up until the ending where I screamed. But listen, it's okay. Maybe we won't play horror games next time. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for coming out, everybody. I had a lovely time. And uh, yeah, hopefully you all just really enjoy getting to cuddle up with me and play some scary games. I really could have, I really benefited from having your arms around me and get to just, you know, feel like I'm closer to you. Okay. Alright. I'm gonna log off then, but I will see you all tomorrow, where, I'm excited, tomorrow we're gonna be playing Mario Kart on the DS. I'm gonna be so, I'm just gonna be, like, squealing from nostalgia the whole time. I really can't wait, so I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, no ending screen again because I forgot to change the transition from the ASMR, so I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye guys, unceremoniously, bye bye! Mm -hmm.